Hi guys, this is Gajendra Verma and uh, I've just got a chance to ask the questions which I always wanted to ask and uh, here we go and I'm very nervous. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity Bye. sir, Bye. both of you. And uh, I've been a big fan ever since I've understood uh, you know what I wanted to mu do music and it was your music uh, which has led me to this path and also helped me a lot in my journey as a musician so uh, oof <laughs> you got it <laughs> off your chest <laughs> <laughs> sir first of all I, I would love to tell you my favorite song of yours Dekha Hai Aise Bhi Tum Hi Se and Tum Hi Se Tum Hi Se yes Tere Mere Saath Yes. Then uh, my most favorite is Nahi Rakta Dil Mein. Right. That's my. I when I hear that song, I get a lot of answers from from the lyrics. So, sir, yeah. how you wrote it and why you wrote it? We were in England at that time, um, uh, and we had rented an apartment opposite Hyde Park. And um, I woke up in the middle of the night because this thing just kept on coming to me, and I said, Aslam, Aslam, wake up! Can you, uh, you know? Uh, Write right. something on this. I wanted to be. Um, it was like what I felt about my son. You know, uh, that was what my towards uh, your son. Yeah, uh -huh. because uh, you know, children are very open when when they speak. Um, when they're babies, you know, they they don't come with a with any baggage. You know, they tell you a fact as a fact. Yes, you yes. Know? So nahi rakta dil mein kuch rakta us baapar. And I was just, he was just growing. For me at that time, it, I was just trying to describe my feelings for Amazing, amazing, amazing. I think everyone should listen to that song. It's again, Nahi Rakta Dil Mein, one of my favorite of all time. And uh, yes, and then coming to Dekha Hai Aise Bhi. First thing which strikes me in that song is the soundscaping of that song. Yeah. I absolutely love it. The cowbell in the center and the guitars on the left, right. Mm. Before that, I have not heard anything of that sort ever. So when you start producing, do you go with the artist's feel or your own thought about the song? Like, how right. do you approach it? Right, so I mean, like, you know, you're, you are, um, you're on a journey with the artist and along the way, you're experimenting and you, sometimes you'll find something, like you'll find a line and you think, oh, okay, that's yeah. nice. And then that's that leads you down a certain path and then yes. you join other things. It's like going down the branches of a tree where you have to keep going until you get to the end place, which is like the, you know, you sometimes you'll have a, a, a vision, but a lot of the time that you don't end up with that vision because the process of discovering and experimenting with anything from a guitar line or to a bass line or anything will then lead you further and further. From yeah. the start, was it like a very natural uh, way of working with both of you? Because it's... I felt very natural. I mean, I just felt that, yeah, <laughs> there were no uh, glitches and all that stuff creatively. Yeah, like yeah. the flute synths, yeah. like I love them. <laughs> flute synths. <You know>. <laughs> like, yeah. That's how right. I would put it. Like, that's right. That's it's right. Well, for Sifar, we had actual flautist. Um, we had an yeah. um, actual violinist from Bharti Avidya ah. Bhavan oh, okay. in uh, England. Yes. And then uh, Vivek came with us and played okay. Nidangam on, uh, um, um, on a few of oh, the tracks. tracks. Ah. Then we had uh, Legwabe. Remember the African uh, guy from Ipitombi? Oh. Uh, Joe Legwabe. Ah. And um, yeah, Mikey recorded him at uh, the Trident Studio, um, at the Sound Studios. It's called the Sound Studios now. So they've, they've renamed it back to <coughs> Trident, so it is Trident again. Oh. So we, we were... Peter? Um, yeah, we, so we are, we, I mean, we were in the middle of Soho in a, stu in a studio that had okay. sort of fallen into... Um, Peter. Uh, like, uh, it was now kind of anonymous, but it, what it used to be was Trident Studio. In that, oh. So in that same room, David Bowie and Queen wow. and Elton John and even Hey Jude by the Beatles was recorded in the same room yeah. that we were in. Um, you know, we were in... A, pretty special yeah. place. It's so amazing like how a small thing like this, mm. just to be in the room as any artist has been, mm. uh, can creatively enhance your... Like, like when he'd be working ego. in... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's ego, I think it's more like a... Uh, you know, you you kind of feel like a sense of belonging and you kind of feel you're on the right track. Most of the time when he'd be producing the stuff, I'd have nothing to do. I'd like be standing outside and see these Japanese tourists come and like, you know, okay. click photographs outside the studio. And I was like, bro, what's this? Why do you have tourists outside this place? This is, oh, this used to be a very famous studio and it was Trident. This is where the Beatles recorded Hey Jude and 
I said, hey, man, <laughs> that, that like, like blew me out. Uh, so I went and stood, opened the door, and I said, now I'm recording. <laughs> you know, and all these guys we just stand to be there in their photographs. Wow. Um, we completed three albums there. Wow. Um, uh, Suno, Sifar, and Ux. Oh, and a lot of uh, Anjani Rahu may happen there, Gori Teri Another one there. of my, all of yeah. my favorite. Actually, you will say the name and I will say it's my favorite. I think uh, as a musician, wo mahol banana hamara kaam hai. And if you, if as a artist you get mahol already set, yeah, I think nothing better than yeah, that. Yeah, because you then you charge because yeah. everybody is just thinking that you know the environment there, the people walking around there, could be from some recording studio or a musician or a filmmaker <laughs> or. That whole Soho yes. environment was, yes. um, yeah, one of my best experiences. Wow. Like, you know. wow. wow, man, it feels so good to ask all these questions I've been containing all these years. <laughs> wow. All right, like, was there a point of uh, point in your career when you both knew that uh, I'm just going to send him the composition and it's going to be done? See, um, initially when I when I met Mikey and he, um, um, I played Sono and Osanam for him. Okay. On the guitar. Okay. And then a week later, I listened to what he He's done. he had function on that, mm. and um, I just knew that this was right. I went back to India and um, decided that no, we should finish the entire album. Had you tried someone before, Mike? Like yes, there was. A, what had happened was I was at the Sun and Sand, and okay. this is much before I met Mikey. Okay. So two guys from England approached me, he says, man, you make a great singer. And I said, who the heck are these people? They okay. don't even know me. And so it was, they were showmen, you know, they were. So they invited me to England, and I went to England um, uh, to uh, record with them. Uh, it was an African, um, uh, what do you call it, production, uh, this thing happening. I quite liked the, the way they were yeah. interpreting my song. Okay. Uh, Suno was based on that kind of a like a... African polyrhythms uh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. That kind of, the way they play the bass. And, but oh. then, um, unfortunately, uh, that didn't really work out for me. Oh. And I was planning to come back because um, I thought, man, this is not going to work out. Mm. Um, this is not what you want for your song. It was not going in that direction. Yeah. Um, on the way back, my wife told me, go, go and meet Mikey, he works there. And she didn't even tell me like where he works. I said, okay. I said, where, uh, where he works in a studio out there. So um, then uh, I went and I knocked at his door and yeah. I said, hi, my name's Lucky, I'm your brother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> you know? So um, that's the first time you guys were meeting. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, he invited me in, and we like sat in the studio, and then I said, like, man, I don't want to really ask him. He would feel that I'm trying to like use him you, or something. Oh. You, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I was getting that <laughs> feeling. But he was, he was very loving, and you know, he was very happy that you know. Uh, you met that we yeah, met, and yes. you know, uh, and he said, "Tell me what what you've made. I want to hear what you've done." Mm. So then I played Osanam for him, and then I played Suno for him, mm. and um, a week later, just before I um, uh, was traveling back to India, I went back to the studio to say bye to him, like mm. you know, generally. Um, and he says, "Wait a moment, I got something to you know show you." Oh. And he took me in the studio, and he played that bass line from Suno. Suno, Suno, okay. You know, and uh, that sound was just what I felt that, man, we connected, you know, I mean, musically we connected. How know? important uh, do you think is to have a good producer and, a, you know, a mixing engineer for an artist? See, um, I don't know about others, but um, I feel I've been very uh, blessed with the fact that, I mean, he's my brother, brother-in-law. Yes. And I had... Um, that freedom to connect with him. But did you have a, a certain idea in your mind that you need to have a blend of no, something? Nothing. I didn't go pre-planned. Okay. I just knew that these are my songs. These and are my I songs, want, and yes. they're not they're not like the regular mm. songs that are happening here. Because when I would play that, I mean, half the time people would say, "Shut up." You know, oh, so I was actually coming to that, like the yeah. hardships of when you started. Yeah, they would say, but because of I, course, I, I I felt there was. It's my truth, you know, I mean, okay. And I remember I used to clean carpets at that time with my friend Aslam. Okay. And um, Aslam used to assist me in cleaning carpets and we just do that. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be in the film industry and I had to find a job, yes. you know, to okay. sustain myself. Mm. 
as a producer mike uh, how important is it to have a current sound in your song i think it's a, it varies from artist to artist yes so i think if you're asking me generally because i do do lots of different types of music and you know i'm aware of what of you know there are different audiences for different types of music yeah. and so you would keep that in mind ideally you want your music to sound dated yes. in in any way yes um but also you don't necessarily want your music to sound like it's trendy mimicking no, no, no. Yeah, yeah 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 i think that what you know what, what what would be evident from then to now you know the technology has changed a lot mm. we are, we've also now been working in uh, back and forward um remotely yes and yeah. um and i think you know the, the people will hear a growth in mm. that Hmm. But at the same time what's important I think is that the soul of the way that we create music yes. is still there. Yes. And the, you know, um Lucky's voice, the acoustic guitar, the the, the way songs are created. Yeah. I think the saxophone part was the new There's a trumpet sound. in the trumpet, 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 trumpet. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, yes. there's a trumpet. And of course the scale change never happens in your songs. <laughs> But yeah it was that's there an, and it's an old trick. <laughs> yeah. No but it, they don't do it any, so much anymore. Right? Yes. That was sort of like Yes. A, so we're talking about since we are talking about the new song uh, Intezar sir I always wait for your new songs. I think it's solely my own selfish self who waits. Yeah. And <laughs> really I'm very honored. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um I believe uh, my brother has contributed as equally as I've um uh, put yes. in so how do you keep your songs so fresh what is the trick <laughs> that's interesting i think i think because um because we weren't paying too much attention to exactly what was happening at the time because if we had paid attention there was a sound in the 90s you know yes. there were yeah yeah there, there things, was yes there was something there and then you know the, the 80s had its sound yes disco had its sound and yes. so if you're very influenced by by what is the current trend at the time then it is likely that that stamp will be there on your music and then years later it will it will still be there when people hear songs that we made 20 25 years ago they they can feel nostalgic but i don't think it makes them feel like it's necessarily dated melody is king yes, yeah, yes 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 so. he that's my brother's dialogue always his teaching to me is that yes melody, melody is, is king. king yeah because uh, if there is a melody then it's hummable and uh, that's when people like to you know, get involved and sing along yes. and you know yes like you always knew that you you were not going to do bollywood well uh, initially um, i didn't really look at bollywood as uh, it used to be a place where cinema was made you know yes and, but uh, with my father's passing on yes I did not find common ground to be there you know mm. I felt like I mean I'm I I'd be very out of place mm. um but um you whenever dad recorded his music in yes. the studios I had the opportunity to sit with his music director or yeah. uh, ar- around the musicians yes. and see what they would be doing and which got me very interested uh then to sustain myself I used to like um sustain the music yes um i'd have to take on different jobs like i worked on an oil rig but i went with the intention of composing on the oil rig you know yes. i didn't really go to uh, work but i was working there of course yeah. that's where suno sipo and all these uh, yeah. so how hard was it back then <coughs> uh, to release and to oh, everyone, reach the audience everyone was um people normal people like you know at shops and stuff like that would say why you want to sing uh, just get a job or open up a shop or you uh, know do this oh, or yeah, yeah yeah i just needed to do what i needed to do yeah but it's really important to believe in your music you know to actually go through the whole process yeah i mean it was my expression and i mean i was to be responsible for it so rasta jitna mushkil phir bhi rasta utna tay kar liya so you decide that this is what you're going to do yes and um, that's what i did Oh uh, well that's i think it and uh, just a story would like to share sir uh, i am a big fan of uh, you sir and of course ar rahman you two were my idols all throughout and uh, there was a point of ti- point in my life when i was contemplating bollywood or pop music you know because there was no pop music at that time and this is 2008 to i just want to compose or do I want to do my independent music and I have to give it to you that you gave me that uh, clear path that I can walk on this and you know sustain it 
and I am really thankful for you, to you hey man, for that. Bro. Seriously, and it was really a thing in my life, like a big thing. This is has been a lovely uh, chance uh, for me to just speak to you guys. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and, you, uh, thank you, thank you. Intezar is we have in, done intezar for your songs. Please, sir, uh, to well. release your songs, please. Come all right. Fast. So for all the Lakeeli fans and Mikey McLeary fans in the house, please just listen to this song. And uh, Intezar is out, and the whole album is coming. Nothing else you would like to have in 2022. So yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much.